Good afternoon and happy new year, everybody. Delighted to be with you on another special moment. And we welcome everybody here and we certainly welcome everybody watching live on our NC Twitter account and our NC Facebook account. Delighted to be with you as uh, North Carolina FC YouTube account as well. You can follow us here. My name is Dean Linky. Proud to be the 13-year voice of the club and super excited about another big announcement. As I always do, I want to thank the media first and foremost for being here. And thanks for all the great work you do in the community. Let's hear it for the media real quick, please. When we changed the name a couple years ago to North Carolina FC, it was truly about uniting. And Steve Malik, that was his mission. That's what we've done. As we look out here, we see the wonderful college coaches, John Kerr and Coach Brady from Duke, Carlos Samuano from North Carolina. The college coaches are here. We thank you for coming. Very much. Appreciate it. Right down to the youth level, so many kids. We are here right now because the Accelerator School was kind enough to let us take this time for this great announcement to meet the new coach of North Carolina FC. The students, the soccer players, they're right here. Let's hear it for the great folks at the Accelerator School. The town of Cary's from day one has been amazing. William Davis, we thank you so much and all the great folks at the town of Cary for making it so easy. Thank you for all you do as well. So with that, <clears throat> one more special thank you, and you'll have an opportunity to hear from him afterwards as well because he was a big key player in the process of hiring the coach, and that is when you take a look at the leadership for North Carolina FC Youth under the direction of Gary Butte, who is here. Let's hear it for North Carolina FC Youth and Gary Butte. Always great to be with you at these special moments and always great to introduce the President General Manager. He has been a key player for us since 2011. You know his deal. He grew up here. He played for Castle. He went to high school here. He was great at NC State where he was a captain and led his team to the Final Four. He won an MLS Cup and Open Cup as well. We're talking about the President General Manager of our club, North Carolina FC, Kurt Johnson. Good morning, or good afternoon, I guess. Um, what a big day. Uh, every new coaching announcement is important for a club or organization. We, we know that, right? Um, this one's extra special in reality. Why? Why is it extra special? Uh, in some ways, the answer to that is, is pretty obvious. You look at Dave Sarakin's coaching and leadership background, the, the culmination of that places him in ra rarefair, sorry, rarefied air as it relates to soccer in the United States. Whether you measure it by trophies, players developed, holding the biggest job our country has to offer in soccer, being a respected leader at every stop during his nearly 40 year career, that's all clear for anyone to see. The less obvious part of the importance of the day relates to the evolution and revolution of soccer in the triangle and statewide. We now have the largest youth to pro soccer club in the country right here. We are ground zero for all that's right about soccer in the US, while at the same time we understand the improvements that need to be made in order for North Carolina Football Club to reach its full potential and to be the best soccer club in the country in every facet. We're already there in some ways, uh, as evidenced by our women's team. This is our focus every day, from youth to pro to the players on the field and the coaches. Dave's hiring is timely in that he has the coaching pedigree to balance the need to develop players and win. That's a process. It doesn't happen every day, but he has um, that background, and he will be able to do that here. Equally important he'll be a key leader in the overall club in the pursuit of our club-wide goals. To be clear, this is not my hire. The club is hiring Dave, and that's monumental. That's, that's groundbreaking, that's revolutionary. It hasn't happened in this community, or for that matter, in this state before. For the first time, our coach, sorry, our coach search committee was represented by the pro side, of course, the youth side, and it had input from our championship winning uh, Courage head coach, Paul Riley, among many others. 
This inclusive approach is the product of many years of hard work by lots of folks to pool our soccer resources and bring the power of our soccer community together. We're still working on it, but we've made a lot of progress. I want to thank the committee for their work. First of all, Gary Butte, CEO, North Carolina FC Youth. Uh, fantastic job, and we appreciate all the work that he put into it, this um, lengthy uh, but fun process. Pete Chandra, our Executive Vice President, North Carolina Football Club, my longtime uh, right-hand man, and appreciate everything that he's done for the club over nine years now, ten years almost. Nick Platter, our, our Assistant General Manager, newly elevated to that role. He's been doing that duty without the title for, for a number of years now, and is a product of, of our club as a player and now as a important leader in the organization. And Steve Malik, of course, our owner uh, and the person who really put uh, North Carolina Football Club on the map, literally in terms of name, um, as well as really pushed us into uh, being in a position to be, our, be able to hire somebody like Dave. As well, I want to congratulate John Bradford, uh, who is you know, we talk about youth player development. We also are and want to be in the future about uh, coaching development. And John is a, a prime example of somebody that has invested blood, sweat, tears, uh, a lot of his professional life in Castle, now in CFC Youth, uh, had about every position imaginable in, in the club and uh, has done a tremendous job throughout. He will be our uh, Dave's assistant coach, his first assistant coach, as well continue on as the leader of our of our academy and be that important bridge among many of us, but the important bridge uh, from in terms of the youth to pro development pipeline. As I said, he's a product of the club and a symbol for all of the 600 plus coaches that our club has about when you put in the work there are rewards. Before I intro Dave, a special thank you goes out to Scotty Schweitzer, Martin Rennie, and of course Colin and Clark for their work as head coaches for Carolina Railhawks, now North Carolina FC, over the past 10 plus years. Without them, there's no way that we're hiring someone like Dave. They, each of them, elevated the role, um, put in exceptional amount of work won a lot of games, won a lot of big games, um, entertained fans, gave young players opportunities uh, in our club and outside our club to, to prove themselves, and at the end of the day, represented our club in, in fantastic fashion. So we thank all three of them uh, each and every day for their work. And uh, the, the last uh, thing I have to do is introduce the new uh, head coach, of North Carolina FC, Dave Serkin. You had to bring up those guys when they beat us with the Galaxy when I came out. We came here all this way and they, get, they, they beat us every time, every time. Well, uh, I'm very humbled, I'm very honored uh, to be standing before you as the head coach of North Carolina FC. Um, three things you, I sort of looked at when I uh, was first thinking about my next uh, move in coaching. Uh, this is something, as Kurt alluded to, I've been doing for a long time now. Uh, and the three things are the people, the place, and the project. Um, I had the good fortune back in March to be here uh, as the men's national team coach when we were playing Paraguay in this field and had a, a week here. But even before that, back in 2002 when uh, we were preparing our national team to go to Japan and Korea for the World Cup. Uh, we spent a month in this uh, territory. It's grown quite a bit in the last 16 years, there's no question about that. But I, I had a, a real taste of what this region was like back in 2002. Uh, periodically between that time and this past March I've been in this area. I'm very familiar with uh, the collegiate programs and I appreciate you guys coming out today. Uh, and the talent-rich market uh, that Raleigh, Cary, this whole region brings. And so I had a real real reminder of that in March. Uh, and I also had uh, the pleasure of spending some time with Steve, 
with Kurt, uh, with Gary and a few people, uh, and really got the, the scope and landscape of, of what this club is about. And it stuck with me. Uh, and when uh, we first had a phone call about this position and began the conversations of uh, what this would be like, uh, the first thing I thought about, well, what are the people going to be like that I'm going to be working with? Because for me, that's very, very essential. And uh, I'd like to say thank you uh, to a few people today. First of all, obviously, starting with Steve, the owner. Um, all of this doesn't happen without Steve. We know that. And uh, getting to know Steve uh, in March a little bit. Last night, we had a really nice dinner. Uh, I'm still feeling the effects of that. Uh, full wise, that's what I mean. Um, but uh, you have to have a guy at the top that has vision and ambition, and Steve certainly has that. Kurt, I've known on and off for many years, uh, and Dean alluded to his his background in the game. Uh, I know I can work well with Kurt. He, he's a soccer guy. Uh, he's a guy that listens. Um, he's got great experience. Uh, and I want to say thank you for for getting me uh, or having allowed me this opportunity. Um, Gary Butte, I've gotten to know a little bit as well, and uh, there's no question that he, he's uh, running a, a, a huge club and doing a fantastic job and was part of the committee. Um, John Bradford, I'm going to get to know quite well. Uh, appreciate all your investment and time into this club, and now that you're on this side of the ledger uh, with the pro side, I'm really looking forward to, to working with you as well. Uh, Nick Platter, I've had quite a few conversations already with Nick. Um, he's, uh, we're building a roster, and we'll get to that in a minute. Looking forward to that. I thank you for that. Um, obviously, my family. Uh, I have a, a wife named Cherie that's moved a lot in her, her lifetime with me, and she was a big supporter of whatever move I made next. Uh, my son, Ian, his wife, Rhea, my daughter, Alexa, and... Shay and Edison, the two little ones, we're all in this together, and everybody's very excited to be back. So people are very important. The community uh, here in, in Raleigh and Cary, um, I know, is excited about getting this thing and moving this thing to another level. So people was very important. Uh, obviously, the place. You look out here, uh, there's very few stadiums around the country that uh, – soccer stadiums, and there's quite a few now. Uh, I still find this to be a fabulous place to, to play. The training facilities, whenever I talk to anybody that's been here, that's the first thing they say is, oh, wow, this place, great facilities, grass fields, good setup, uh, good infrastructure. So that was very important to me in my, uh, in my decision. Um, and as I already alluded to, I, I've, I've had the experience of being here and being a part of it uh, with a team, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to, to build something here as well. And then as far as the project, um, uh, you alluded also to the previous coaches and, and all throughout the process, uh, this program has made great strides. When I had conversations with Steve and Kurt and the others about can we now take this to another level, I think, I think the timing's great uh, to, to really push and, and really make uh, this club as good as any in the country. Um, but my job is to win. My job is to build a first team. My job is to put an entertaining product on the field uh, using the resources we have to build a roster. Um, I'm really excited, and I know some of the players are here today, and I, I've met them. Uh, we're bringing back a good core, uh, getting to know you as well on the field and working with you. I'm excited about that. Uh, always the challenge in pro soccer is building rosters, and that's uh, been started already, and we're getting after it. And we're going to try to put together a group that uh, is going to compete every day, a group that's going to enjoy playing uh, soccer every day, that's going to be entertaining. Um, and I'm sure we're going to have questions afterwards with the press to follow up on all that. But um, we want to win, and we want to put that, put a product that people are going to get excited about. Uh, and that's what motivates me. So the people, the place, the project, it checked all the boxes. And last night, as I alluded to, we had a wonderful dinner uh, with Steve and Kurt and Pete and Gary and Nick uh, and um, John, who am I leaving out? I think that was our crew last night. 
Uh, and I came away from that meal really feeling like we're all in this together. And that's, to me, the best feeling. So uh, it's a process, as we've talked about, in terms of taking it from here to the next level. But the ambition, the vision, the desire is there, and that's what motivates me. So uh, I'll conclude by saying uh, I'm humbled. I'm honored to be here. I can't wait to get started. Uh, in the next month, it's going to be here quick um, and be part of this community. Uh, get to know the Oak City supporters. Get to know people in the community that, that love this club. And hopefully we attract a lot more and fill this, fill this stadium up. So, again, thank you. I'm honored. I can't wait to get started. Appreciate it. When Dave Sarakin says he's going to win, you need to believe him. When you see his press release, you need to remember that he won his Supporters' Shield. He won a Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. He took his team to the MLS Cup Championship with the Chicago Fire, amongst all the other success he had both as a head coach and an assistant coach at the college and professional game, a big-time hire. And one more word on that. Speaking with Ernie Stewart last week on my podcast, he said, along with Ian Barker, that if anyone deserves our heartfelt appreciation for the job he did holding the throne for the highest job in soccer in our country, it's the job that Dave Sarakin did leading the U.S. men's national team the past year and a half. Let's hear it for Dave Sarakin one more time. With that, both Kurt and Dave pointed out the important role that Steve Malik has played with professional soccer in this market. You know about all the championships. He's won with the courage. You know about his focus to do it with that, with this team now, North Carolina FC. And Steve, so the first question to you, such an important hire. You got yourself a real good one here. Is that a question? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're thrilled to have Dave on board. Um, you know, it's uh, the process was uh, one that we had a lot of quality, interested folks. We're trying to build something here that does attract that kind of talent. And, uh, you know, to be able to get our our first target, <laughs> our, our number one pick, uh, to come in and, and lead our community. And really, I just say that it's really a lot more about uh, aligning our club, this was an opportunity to really think about what we're doing, where we want to go with soccer. And uh, we have resources that no one else has. And uh, so, you know, you look at John Bradford coming on as, uh, as our first assistant, it's a clear indication that uh, our commitment is there to work with our youth club, to develop those players. Um, and, uh, you know, speaking of your tenure, as a national team coach, I mean, you know, you had more players with their first caps than anybody in the shortest period of time. And, uh, and, and we are going to represent our community, give players an opportunity to get on the field and, and have a pro career uh, track. I hope some of you kids that are sitting, I know some of you kids that are sitting down here are going to be pros, and I hope you're playing for us. That's, uh, you know, we're sitting here in the accelerator school. There's a lot of things this community has done. Uh, what we got to do is take it up a level and win on the first team for the men and do it in a way that we create long-term opportunities and represent the community well. We will break for one-on-one -on -one interviews, but we do want to see some hands for some questions for Dave, Steve, and Kurt. Also, Gary Butte will be available for questions. Nick Platter, John Bradford, and there's several great players here as well for North Carolina FC. How about some questions for the dais as well? Don't be shy. I know you do love those one-on-one -on -one interviews. We do have a shy crowd here today, still celebrating New Year's. Obviously, Dave, uh, being with the national team, though, for so many trips here to North Carolina, you know how special this market is. Uh, I, I do know. Um, as I said in my remarks, um, the facilities, the area, the, the, the interest in the sport, it's over the years has grown tremendously. Uh, that's uh, what I alluded to in terms of one of the boxes that checked for me in terms of coming back to this area. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I think uh, it can only get better. Yeah. 
That's a very good question. Uh, what did I learn most about myself? Uh, I would say starting right away that I love coaching. Uh, it was a very refreshing uh, moment for me. It was obviously disappointing not going to the World Cup and we we had to get through that process and uh, I took the position back in November of 2017 shortly after uh, and if you fast forward over the 13 months one thing a few things I learned one is how much I I love coaching and teaching uh, how, how important um, that position was but also uh, being around these younger players uh, really energized me and um, gave me sort of a, a, a fresh look at, at, at the game. And, and the thing that I would say again also is uh, I don't have all the answers. Uh, I've been at it, uh, you said, 40 years, and that was a crazy number that I've been doing this. Uh, but uh, I, I'm still learning, and, and I learned that a lot too. And so uh, you get a new group. The process of building a team, the process of getting to know players, uh, the buzz that comes from the ups and the downs of coaching, uh, which we'll have with our club as well, that's what motiva motivates me. And that uh, reminded me of all that during that time. Well, I, I, that's a that's a tricky question. You know, for me personally, I uh, I need to know my roster, the current roster, the the group that's coming in, and as I say, it is a process. Um, clearly, um, we all know where we want to be uh, by lifting trophies, but uh, the team didn't make the playoffs last year, so I think it would be a, a good way to start, making sure that uh, we're in a position to make the playoffs. Um, and once you get into the playoffs, as we all know, you have the ability to win a championship. So uh, I think it wouldn't be the smartest for me to predict anything because I've been in this game too long. I mean, we lost to Trinidad on the road uh, to go to a World Cup, and no one would have predicted that, including myself. So uh, I would say for sure uh, a team that's going to be hard to play against uh, a team that's going to make the playoffs and a team that hopefully can make a run to see how far we can go. Eventually, we want to lift trophies. Neil? <laughs> Well, the conflict is that in order to uh, put a young player on the field, you don't always know what the right time to do that is. Um, for them to have success and ultimately f for the team to win. So um, our challenge, Dave's challenge, and it becomes a bigger challenge as we have more talented young players coming through our, our system is to pick the right moments to have those players get their first minutes, um, to pick the right players in that moment, um, while at the same time, sometimes saying, no, they're not ready. That's the hardest thing, I think, sometimes, um, especially when you have a large pool of players. And Dave has a tremendous amount of experience in that. It's the next frontier for us, instead of one or two here or there, to have five, 10, 15 that, that we got to pick between um, and, and make sure that in their moment, in our moment, it's, it's, it's the right time. So not sure if that entirely answers your question, but that's, I think that's a big part of our, our future. And you know, every major club around the world is, is faced with that day in and day out. Well, the, I, yes, there are a lot of uh, challenges and opportunities out there, challenges for us to, to keep players here and opportunities for the players to pursue. But uh, it's the same way that we attract a guy like Dave Sarikin here, is this is a pretty special place. It's a special club. And I believe every day it's becoming more special because of the quality of people, the leadership, um, 
the work that's being put in, the facility building that's happening, from the youngest of the young up to uh, the pro men's and women's teams. Um, so uh, I, 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 my, my staff and, and the folks that I work with hear this a lot from me is focus on the things that are right about our club as opposed to what we don't have. And we have so much that is right, um, and we're just building on that every day. Mark? Well, we had the, the Steve touched on it. We had the great uh, opportunity to vet a lot of candidates. We had, uh, whereas maybe seven, eight years ago, there were a handful of really qualified candidates. In this particular case, we were certainly well above 50 in terms of people that we wanted to make sure we gave them their due, you know, and assess them on a, uh, a number of key criteria. So Nick Platter and our search committee, we went through that uh, in a methodical way. Um, and so that was a fun process, and, and uh, so that, that took some time. Um, the good news is we, we identified Dave um, pretty early on as our leading candidate, and we were able to have some, some productive conversations early on as it relates to options to exercise and, and things like that to get his feedback on them. Um, at the end of the day, Nick and I made those decisions early on, you know, a month ago or, or so. Uh, but we were fortunate to, to be able to talk over the last couple weeks and uh, the week prior to us announcing Dave and, and get some business done as well as the business of getting him signed. Any more questions before we break for one-on-ones? I'm glad you asked that. I, <clears throat> um, I was down at their headquarters. This would have been in maybe in February. I don't. I, we were playing. We were training down there, getting ready for a game, and uh, I was able to uh, to meet all the folks there and see the scope of of what goes on at the headquarters, uh, and then obviously. Uh, getting a, a real feel for the league itself and the amount of teams. Uh, uh, I've done a, a lot of research, to be very honest. And uh, I made a comment back then that the USL is becoming much, much more relevant in the American landscape for many reasons, but primarily uh, for opportunity, for opportunity for young, young players. Well, it doesn't have to be young, but for players to have a platform to play, uh, and it's not just MLS. And there's different uh, f different reasons why players would play in the MLS. Uh, I'm sorry, USL versus uh, uh, MLS. But it's a, it's a it's become a, a very relevant league, a much more competitive league. Uh, there are better coaches, better players, uh, more competition, um, and I'm learning more each day. Uh, it, it's it's. It's something that I'm, I'm excited about from that standpoint. And I think the relevancy of this league has really gotten to a point where uh, uh, it's an important piece to the development of players in the landscape of soccer. That's a great question. Okay, so we will uh, break for one-on-ones. Uh, earlier, Kurt Johnson talked about Pete Chandra. I want to extend that as well beyond Pete to the entire member, uh, everybody that works for North Carolina FC and the North Carolina Courage. It's amazing what a big announcement like th this does to galvanize the entire staff. We thank you, all the members of the staff for North Carolina FC and North Carolina Courage for your wonderful work. One last thank you. I want to thank our committee again for Finding us our coach, Steve Malik, Kurt Johnson, Gary Butte, Nick Platter, Paul Riley, and those wonderful people. And, of course, the most important thank you. Thank you, Dave Sarakin, for being the new head coach of North Carolina FC. We're excited to have you. Yeah. So before we uh, start with one-on-ones up here, we're going to take a quick photo op. Uh, with uh, the three of you on the stage, please. And please, Gary and John, if you'd like to join us, and Nick for a quick photo op. Then we are opening those doors. There will be food at the back after uh, 
after those. I see Jeff is happy about that. So. And thank you all for coming.